And so as well as the big digesters, I've gone right back to basics and tried to engineer some small digesters. And I'm trying to build a family of small digesters. This is the second smallest, which is 600 litres. There's one smaller than this, 200 litres. Um, we're trying to build them a range of sizes. Now, all of my other digesters in the past have had gas mixing, uh, which I find is absolutely the most cost-effective way and most energy-efficient way of mixing a big digester. Now, why do you need to mix a digester? If you've got an active gassing substance, you've got this liquid waste which is producing by <coughs> degrading, so the solids are breaking down to produce methane and carbon dioxide, that gas, by definition, will carry solids to the top. You cannot stop it. And if you've got a reasonably active digester, you will get a crust forming. Now, if the substrate is very liquid, and the particles are very small, the crust will actually, it, it, it won't form a crust, it, will, it can carry on biodegrading without forming a crust. But if you're handling anything that's anything like difficult, anything particular, straw in or grass or whatever, within 24 hours you can form a crust that's strong enough to walk on. That gives you a sort of indication as to how difficult this can be. And in, in high dry matter wastes, where it's difficult for the gas to escape, if you turn off the mixing and your gas, your, your digester of a, is of a certain type of construction, it could actually just simply push, blow it apart, because the gas has to escape. So you've got quite a lot of technical problems to worry about. Now, hopefully, I've solved most of them with this design. I've gone to what is the well-established German system, which is a very slow speed mechanical mixer. They have used this system for years on small digesters, but they have not been successful in scaling it up to very large ones. The engineering get, just gets bigger and bigger and heavier and heavier. And... Anyway, I've gone back to this very simple system, which is a rotating paddle. Now you see the paddle rotates in a vertical direction, because you've got to break up the scum and bring it down and back into the um, into the liquid portion, and also bring anything up that's tending to settle on the bottom. So in here we have a rotating paddle. Okay. Now the idea is this, this would revolve approximately once every 20 minutes. Rotate very slowly using very very little energy because energy cons parasitic energy consumption is also something to consider. It's dead easy to build a digester that you heat with an electric element and stir with a high-powered electric motor and your net energy return is negative. You're trying to produce a positive energy return. Um, so in this, this concept, so to speak, um, I've got two heat exchangers on this side. They can be heated independently from different heat sources. Now, if you look, the rotating paddle actually sweeps past the heat exchangers to make sure the heat exchangers don't get clogged up with gunk, whatever, you know, straw bits, whatever. So they get swept, and it enables the heat to be transferred into the slurry or the waste, whatever you want to pull it up on there. Um, so you could, for example, heat the one heat exchanger from a solar panel or heat the other from some other heat source. Um, where you don't want the other heat source to be heating the solar panel, because you have to make Because, in my view, um, in order to get efficient digestion in this country, the only way we can really do it is to run our digesters reasonably hot. You have a choice. You either have a big tank, slow digestion at, say, 25 degrees centigrade, which is what happens in tropical countries, you know, where you don't need extra heating. In this country, you have to insulate your digester very, very, very well. Otherwise, you lose all the energy you're gaining. So the whole basis of this is extremely good insulation. The outlet pipe is insulated. The inlet pipe is insulated. We've got two inches of polyurethane foam all over. When the thing is clamped together, you'll see that the insulation, there's nowhere that is uninsulated because we cannot afford to waste any of the heat that we have to put into this. Um, 
This is the inlet. You can either tip liquid waste in. Um, my ultimate goal, or one of the goals that you this is, uh, should we say, an optional extra. In other words, you can choose which type of inlet you have. You can, in fact, pump straight into the inlet. Um, but the idea is that this is angled, there's a particular angle of 30 degrees. We can have twin miniature augers, so we can very slowly feed the stuff into the digester using um, a very slow speed drive. So you can fill your bucket full of the waste, and over a period of time, that waste will be fed into the digester. And as it goes in, it gets swept sideways from the inlet by a series of cutter blades and taken round and shredded through a mating cutter bar. And so the whole series of blades in there. So you can put in unprocessed waste, but at any one time, only one cutter blade is cutting, so it's constant torque to drive this thing round. The idea is you can go out, get your veggies, trim your cabbages, pull up the weeds, pop them in. I'm wanting to be able to digest anything, um, anything to do with your household and garden, but it's food waste or vegetable waste, um, and handle it as it comes off the site. Um, outlet pipe is over there. Uh, ultimately, I hope to have some form of fibre separation device on the outlet. I do, I've made separators over the years for squeezing the fibres as a liquid or vice versa. So you can use the liquid as a liquid fertiliser and the fibres as a compost. And I would like to be able to do that on a small scale as well. <coughs> um, I think that's basically system. Do you have any questions? Yes, I said, what about your spreading? Oh yes, we've got this, this is what I call the gas out of the chimney, which has got a viewing port for those who are tall enough to look through it. <laughs> and <laughs> I'm all, I also intend, well, the reason it's quite large is to be able to do air injection uh, desulfurization scrubbing within the top of the digester so that the sulfur can fall back in. When you put air in it, how does that work? Uh, it grows sulfur bacteria, helps sulfur, sulfur bacteria to grow and take the hydrogen sulfide out of the gas. Drops back in. And drops back in, yes. It's, it's a well established technology now. The amount of air you inject is approximately 2% of your gas production rate, depending on the substrate that you're feeding into the digester because your sulfur levels will depend on the type of feedstock. Okay? Thank you very much. Well, why is the outlet pipe up at the top rather than down at the bottom? Because it's gravity flow. In other words, this is the point here, that this, this point here is what sets the level inside the digester. So is, is that an anaerobic? Yes. So how do you see this? Do you know, taking stuff in? Because the, the liquid level is here. This is your liquid level. That goes yeah. down below liquid level. Mm -hmm. <coughs> we can't take too many questions because we've got to fill the Retention time, Jane. Mm -hmm. Well, if it's food type waste, 40 days. 40? 40 days, yes. Okay. Related back to your dry matter, your feedstock, feed, feed material. One more question from the children. I figured it out. Okay. <laughs> What's it going to cost? <laughs> <laughs> you can talk about that later. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of conversation, I suspect. <laughs> okay, what can I do? Okay, let's go.